Now the, and remember I can switch off any time if you wish. Right, we're continuing with page 172, activity 7.11. And uh, it says add a button, BTN highest, BTN lowest. Find the lowest number in the list and display those in the memo component. So let's go and do that. BTN, we did BTN average. We used the global variable sum divided by the count. But the highest, remember I showed you that we're going to get the first item is going to be the highest. The first box, the list box is like a whole row of um, boxes containing, in this case, numbers. So just to demonstrate, I don't know whether you remember what we did last time. We had this situation going where we had a list box. It looks like this and we'll have random numbers in here and they are numbered from naught. The boxes are numbered from naught upwards, okay? So if there's five boxes, we have naught to four. The first one is naught. And remember I explained to you last time that we take the first box equal to the highest. Okay, we'll make that the highest. And then we'll go through each box and see, is that one highest? Okay, now this one's the highest. Then it looks over here, is that the highest? No. Is that the highest? No. And then it goes to the last one, and that is the highest. So that is what we're going to do. We take the first box equal to, to the highest. Now, that's what we did over here, that line. Our highest equals string to int. Don't forget, you have to have converted to integer because items in the list box are strings. And we're saying for k equals 1 to the number of boxes altogether minus 1. That is how we can measure the number of boxes that are full. Over here, count is 5. The count of this list box equals 5, the count property. And if you want to go from 1 to 4, you have to say for k equals 1 to count minus 1. Remember box number 0 is the first one. But over here we're asking if that item is greater than our highest. This is where we left off on Friday. We have to convert this to a string. I mean, sorry. This is already a string. We have to convert it to an integer. So we say string to int open brackets. The list box item is now being converted to an integer. Now we can compare the two things because they are the same data type. So that's a string converted to integer. If that is greater than this integer over here, what are we going to do? We've got a new highest. Our highest. Turn on equals. The list box item. So at the end of this loop, you can see it's going to go through every single box. K it starts at box number north, then we go for one to the last one. We say if that number is greater than our highest, and our highest is equal to that number. That k, you must make sure in your for loop counter that you put k in the square brackets there for the array box number. Now we're going to copy and paste this whole thing. Oh, by the way, can you see we're only doing one thing in the if statement, so we don't need begin and end. So I'm got, got rid of that extra code begin and end, I don't need it because we're only doing one thing in our if statement. And in fact, this for loop would work pretty fine like such, with no begin and end at all. Because if you can see, there's no semicolon after for k equals something to something do. There's no semicolon there. It means 
this if statement is part of this line. This can actually go right at the end of, you can say if, you carry on writing there. It can be one long line. But for the simplicity of understanding what's going on, we just want to understand our code so we indent and it's easier to read. So just keep on putting begin and end there, guys. Because you're more than likely going to do more than one thing inside a loop. <coughs> and in the if statement, in this case, we're only doing one thing. So that how highest equals to whatever is only one statement. Now I'm going to copy and paste this whole lot. And why? Because I'm going to now use I lowest. We need another variable called I lowest. Another variable called R lowest. We're going to set R lowest equal to the first box. Just like just like we did with R highest. R lowest is going to be the first box. And guys, here's a trick which I strongly recommend you learn how to do. It will save you a lot of time in exams and with writing code for your patch and so on. I want to change R highest to R lowest. And I've got it written a couple of places here in this code that I copied and pasted. And the best way to do it is highlight all the code and the one where I want to change the variable name. Are you paying attention? Then you'll see the two pins over here. It's yellow little pins. It's called sync edit mode. You just click once on that. And then you type wherever you want to type the new variable name and it changes it wherever else it exists in that selected set of selection. Right, so we've got our lowest and our highest. And we're going to display them in the memo and that's simple enough to do. Which memo? List dat or mem display? No, mem display. This is a list box, that's a memo. Mem display. Mem display dot lines dot add. How do we add a blank line to a memo or rich edit? That is how we do it. An empty line. Then we're going to go and put in our rich edit dot lines dot add statement. And copy and paste to go and make it easier for you. And save a lot of time with copying and pasting. Yes, we're doing the highest and the lowest. I'm doing the highest and lowest in one button click. Yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. Uh, you can you can delete that other button then. We can call this button BTN highest and lowest. It's funny, you know, I was just doing exactly the same kind of concept but with the rays with the grade 11s today. Yeah, we're doing this all in one button, so you can just change the caption of your button and delete the other one. Not a big deal. <laughs> 